Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, John Mariani. How are you doing? I am well, Art. How are you? Great, thanks. Uh, John, you're looking good. Hey, um, you remember when uh, you would arrive in L.A., call right. me up and uh, take me with you to uh, uh, a dinner or two or three sometimes with uh, when you were doing re restaurant reviews in L.A. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in those trips, I remember that we went to a number of places, all excellent, fine restaurants, uh, but a number of places that were owned by, I'll call it family chefs. I, I remember one place we went to uh, on Melrose with a uh, wonderful little Italian place. He and his wife had opened it oh, yeah. up. Yeah. And um, uh, and and you brought another friend who's who was also a chef. That was a great dinner, yeah. um, and fabulous food. But other times we would go to a, I don't want to call it a chain restaurant, but it was a fine restaurant um, that was under the name of a famous chef. And I and I uh, forgive me, I'll just use Wolfgang Puck as an example. Wolfgang Puck Puck uh, became very famous as a chef. And of course, he took his uh, success and expanded it into multiple restaurants and a large company that that uh, opens restaurants everywhere in malls and in shopping. Well, maybe not in malls, but no. fine restaurants. They're all good restaurants. But oh, he's, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say they all are, but go ahead. But, you know, they have they are playing off of his name. Yes. And of course, it's a corporation. Yes. And most of the restaurants that I've been to, if you see a Wolfgang Puck on it, um, I think I can certainly trust. I mean, it's we're not talking yes. McDonald's duplication. Oh, we're talking a Wolfgang Puck quality. Yes. Um, I've been to a Wolfgang Puck in a museum, and I can't think of which museum it was. But, you know, he buys the franchise and opens up a very nice restaurant mm -hmm. in the museum, the, the Met or whatever. It is. So my question for you is, do these large um, industrial versions of a famous chef, they're corporations, and they are, they, does their size guarantee the food is going to be good? Or maybe does the food suffer because they've gotten away from that mom and pop, mm -hmm. you know, fine dining that, that Wolfgang Puck was known for in the beginning. I, I, that's a question. I don't know. It's a kind of a business question, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it it, it has had uh, a negative impact, especially in those little where you start out with mom and pop, and suddenly mom and pop uh, looks like uh, Colonel Sanders' uh, icon. You know, um, Colonel Sanders started out that way. He just had a little fried chicken place off the highway, um, and uh, he he went around a famous story in i think it was new york magazine he used to go around to all of these franchises of his and stick his finger in everything and taste everything and just tell him you're not doing it the right way and uh mimi sheridan of uh, new york magazine followed him around and he in new york and he said you you know I'm, I'm taking this franchise away well there was only one of him and there's only one emerald lagasse and there's only one wolfgang puck and there only one Ducasse. the difference between um, let's say a chain of McDonald's or Hardee's or something like that, um, is that the those kinds of chains aim for the lowest possible cost and the highest possible profit margin, which maybe is only one or two percent, but if you're selling 10 million hamburgers and french fries, you're making a lot of money. Whereas in the um, corporate, corporate uh, restaurants run or at least with the names of the highfalutin chefs on it, um, they really do have to keep up a much higher food cost. They have enormous uh, clout in being able to buy in the market better stuff, and, and even within in any individual city. So they're going to get the best seafood if they're willing to pay for it. They're going to get the best USDA prime beef if they're willing to pay for it. So that's one thing that is, if not a guarantee, at least as an indicator that it's going to be you know, if not the original, it's going to be close to it. Um, in a lot of these cases, especially in Las Vegas, however, these chefs would sign their name on the bottom line of a contract, a uh, management contract, and they would bring in one of their chefs from their other, from another one of their restaurants, 
But the whole rest of the team, the management team, the other cooks, the maitre d', everybody else was hired by the casino, by the hotel. So it's not going to be much. Case in point, Rayo's is this famous 10-table restaurant in Harlem, which is jammed every night for various reasons that have to do with people think the mafia hangs out there, which is certainly not true, at least not true every night. And to get in is impossible. I mean, literally impossible unless you know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. They opened one in Las Vegas with like 250 seats, which you can get into <laughs> anytime you want, especially yeah. in the States. Um, so is it anything like the original Rayos? Of course not. Of course not. It's like it's it's like you know taking a a little Vermeer painting like this and blowing it up on the side of a building. You're not going to have the same same effect. So um, those considerations taken into consideration mean that the the wider the expanse, the more restaurants that let's say Wolfgang Puck opens, the less control he has over any of them. Um, I should say that Puck himself is very well known. But if right today out there in Los Angeles, John, you um, drive to Spago and eat at Spago tonight, there's a pretty good chance he might be there. That is his home base. Same in New York, Jean-Georges von Gerichten, who has 50 restaurants around the around the world. Um, Jean-Georges is in all likelihood going to be at his um, restaurant in New York, his flagship Um which means he doesn't fly to his restaurant in Bangkok or Paris or Dubai very often because uh, he's only one man. But yes, they, there is going to be a higher quality of decor, there's going to be a higher quality of wine service, and there's going to be a higher quality of food. But it's never going to be the original. I mean, you know, there's Elvis and there are Elvis impersonators. And Elvis impersonators are pretty amazing, but they're not the king himself. I think uh, one of the restaurants that um, uh, is pretty consistent, uh, depending, uh, irrespective of where it is, is uh, Ruth's Chris. You're going to mm -hmm. get a good steak there. I mean, well, again, the, the smaller your menu, there's going to be shrimp mm -hmm. cocktail and a piece of cheesecake at the end and a steak in the middle. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of a no brainer. <clears throat> as long as you can consistently get that amount of really good beef. And that's simply not true of any of the steakhouse chains anymore. There's just not enough of the really great beef to go around. Yeah. So have, less, you, less standards and the grades. Do you have another uh, one or two suggestions of uh, uh, a, a chain, if you will, of a, of a quality restaurant that uh, you think is uh, fairly uh, consistent uh, throughout the, the world? Yeah, I think that um, Alain Ducasse, the French chef um, who made his uh, reputation on three-star Michelin restaurants in... Uh, in oops, sorry, to turn it. <laughs> what do I do? What do I do? I <laughs> you just did uh, it. I forgot to turn it off. Anyway, um, out, of, out of Monaco, he made uh, three Michelin-star restaurants, and he's opened a number around the world with his group, the Alain Ducasse group, and they are insistent that... It's high quality and standards be held. Also, the late Joel Robuchon, who died a couple of years ago, has a number of restaurants called Ateliers. They're, they're, you sit at a bar, and uh, it's kind of like a tapas type of thing. And those are very, very dependable. He's always had great chefs there. Good, good, good advice. I appreciate you clearing that up for me. So, My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.